Now these analgesic pathways we've just looked at, the endogenous analgesic pathways are descending. So it starts in the mind, it goes down through the hypothalamus, the periaqueduct or grey matter, the rafe nucleus, down the dorsal lateral tracts, inhibiting the afferents as they pass through the dorsal horn. It's descending. But there's another idea called ascending inhibition. And this is sometimes called gate control theory. And this goes way back to the names associated with the Samel, Zak and Wall way back in 1965. And it, des it describes an ascending gating mechanism. And it's another modality of modulation. Pain can be modulated. It's not the one part of tissue damage giving rise to one unit of pain, it's modulated. And this is another explanation for modulation. It's an ascending inhibition though. The inhibition happens as the nerve pathways go, or the nerve impulses go up the way. And the idea is that noxious afferents can be blocked at the spinal cord level. And what this is based on is touch sensation. So if you injure your elbow, what do you automatically do? Ooh, that, ooh, you rub it, don't you? It's automatic to rub an injured area. And we do this with our children, don't we? You know, if they come in and say they've bashed something, it's just natural to rub it for them. So what you're doing by rubbing it for them is you are generating lots of touch, sensory, afferent impulses going into the central nervous system. And the idea is if, if there's lots of touch sensation going through a particular level, through a particular spinal nerve through a particular spinal nerve at the same time, then if there's touch sensations going through that level of the spinal cord, then the pain impulses can't get through at the same time. So if you imagine that you're in a room and there's only one door to the room and you're in the room with lots of fat people and they all decide to leave the room at once. Now they're going to block off the whole door because they're fat and they're going to be one after another going through. So when you try and get out, the door's going to be blocked because there's some bulk in the way of your exit. I know that's a bit of a, uh, an analogy, but um, this is what gate control theory is saying. So because there's lots of touch sensations going through at any one time, the pain sensation often can't get through from the periphery to the spinal cord to go up to be detected as pain. So we can rub sore areas, we can give massages, and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation uses this, so-called TENS. So you've probably seen TENS machines, they put an electrical current into an area, around about a painful area. Not so much that the electrical, cur electrical current is painful, but so it's tingly, and that means there's lots and lots of touch sensations from the electrical device the, the TENS machine going in through a particular level of the spinal cord at any one time. And if there's an electrical impulse going through the door, when a pain impulse arrives, the pain impulse can't get through. That's the idea of gating theory. So let's have a look at how this might be working. So here we have the spinal cord. And as we know, it's got gray matter and white matter. And as we know, we have the cell body here of the sensory neuron, the dendrite of the sensory neuron is going to go in and it's going to terminate and synapse before decusating across and arising up on the opposite side to the brain where it's going to go to the thalamus and generate a pain. But there's also other sensory neurons going in at the same level by the same spinal nerve here. So here's another touch one going in. It's also going to be a dendrite of a sensory neuron, the cell body. And that's also going to be going into the spinal cord. And it's going to be trying to get through the same layer 
this bit is the important bit here, the same layer of the spinal cord before it goes up in its own, uh, in its own sensory pathway up to the brain. Now, because this area of the spinal cord only has so much volume, there's only so many nerve fibres there, then only so many impulses can get through that particular part of the spinal cord at any one time. It's a gate. And if there's touch impulses going through, then the pain impulses aren't going to be able to get through. Now, I know that, that explanation is not particularly satisfying, but the physiology of gait control theory isn't that well understood, but this is basically what it means. This is as much as I understand about it. It's ascending inhibition. But we can utilize it by rubbing, by massage, by tens, hot and cold packs, anything that's going to modulate and reduce the patient's pain experience is good for us, good for our patients.